Have you tried Minoxidil without seeing results? In today's video, you're going to find out how adding this one little known ingredient can massively boost your Minoxidil's potency. We'll be diving into the research. We'll see exactly how and why this stuff works so good with Minoxidil, as well as how you can start using it as part of your hair care routine. You will not want to miss today's video. Stay tuned. So what is spironolactone? Now spironolactone is a drug that's been around for many decades and is prescribed primarily for high blood pressure or hypertension. The patent has now expired and you can find it in generic versions as well as the brand name Aldactone. It's available in tablets and as an oral suspension. Now I'm not going to bore you with the details of what it's chemically classed as and what exactly it does and so forth. What matters for our purposes is that it's an anti-androgen. So it binds to the androgen receptor and blocks it meaning that androgens like DHT cannot activate it. For this reason, it's one of the go-to treatments for doctors when they prescribe medications against female pattern hair loss. Now, when it comes to female pattern hair loss, scientists and doctors have long suspected that this is actually a constellation of different conditions. So there's various conditions, but they all have the same outward symptoms and we class them as female pattern hair loss. Now, some of these women suffer from thyroid issues and in other women, the cause of their hair loss is unknown. But there is a percentage of women, maybe around half, where their hair loss is due somehow to an excess of androgen activity. And for these women, spironolactone can be effective and it's something that a doctor will often prescribe. So the obvious question is, if it works for female pattern hair loss, why can't it work for male pattern hair loss? After all, every case of male pattern hair loss does have an androgen component. Now, the problem is, that because it blocks the androgen receptor, spironolactone will affect the activity of every single male hormone, not just DHT. So it's also gonna block the action of testosterone. And not only that, but spironolactone directly lowers the levels of testosterone in the body. So for this reason, the men that take it can get really nasty side effects, including erectile dysfunction, gynecomastia, loss of libido, and so on. In one word, scientists call this feminization. So it's obviously not a drug that you can give to men systemically. So it's something that's prescribed systemically in very rare cases. But what if you wanted to apply it topically directly on the scalp? Now in theory, you could get the topical anti-androgen effects without any of the nasty systemic side effects. And for one reason or another, I'm not sure why, this is something that hadn't been tried until recently, until a few months ago when we got this research paper out of a university in Egypt. So as you can see, the researchers recruited 60 patients with pattern hair loss. 39 were men and 21 were women. The patients were 18 to 45 years old and had varying degrees of hair loss. Now the researchers split the patients randomly into three groups. One group got topical monoxidil, topical monoxidil gel 5% daily. The other group got topical spironolactone gel 1% daily. And the other group got the combined topical spironolactone 1% and minoxidil 5% in the same gel. Now, treatment lasted for 12 months and the main efficacy parameter was photographic evaluation of the entire head. So the researchers took before and after photos of the patient's entire head. And the scoring system they used to measure regrowth is called SALT. This stands for severity of alopecia tool and it measures the percentage regrowth over the surface of the scalp on a six point scale. So you go from A0 for no change or further loss to A1 for poor regrowth, A2 for fair, all the way up to A5 for complete regrowth. Now, in addition to this, the researchers also took scalp biopsies. And after 12 months, here were the results. Group one, minoxidil only, 20% excellent, 30% good, 10% fair, 30% poor response, and 10% no response. Group two, spironolactone only, 25% excellent, 20% good, 35% poor and 20% no response. And group three that got the combination treatment, 40% excellent, 50% good, 10% fair response. So there were no patients in this group with poor or no response. So comparing the, through, the three, the spironolactone only group was the weaker of the three treatments. And this was followed by the minoxidil only, but the combination treatment easily beat the other two. Because as we saw, every single patient in the combination group responded and at a minimum, they had a fair response. 
So what about the scalp biopsies? The scalp biopsies also showed that the men in the combination group had an increase in the percentage of their antigen hairs. That's their actively growing hairs. And this was accompanied by a significant decrease in the percentage of telogen or resting hairs. So in this photo, you can see from left to right the before and afters of a man that was in the combination group. At the far left is the baseline photo in the middle after six months and at the far right after 12 months of treatment. This is classed as excellent improvement. So what about the side effects? Did the topical spironolactone reach into circulation and cause any systemic side effects? I want to read to you directly from the paper. The more frequent side effect in patients was contact dermatitis, mainly presented as pruritus, burning and scaling in 20% of the patients. Most of the symptoms were mild and endurable. No history of headaches, dizziness, gynecomastia, breast tenderness, and menstrual irregularity. No side effects on libido and sexual performances have been found. So in a sample of 39 men, after 12 months of treatment, you had no apparent systemic side effects, which is exactly what we want to hear. So what's our take on this paper? Now I have to tell you, with regards to the quality of the paper, this is a well-written paper. We have the methods that are well-documented and the results are also well-documented. So we have the before and after photographs of the entire head and these are accompanied by microscopic slides of the scalp biopsies. So all in all, this is a very good study. The results look legit and the treatment looks valid. A combination of topical minoxidil fortified with spironolactone could be a treatment option for men with male pattern hair loss. And as always, the men that have a diffuse pattern of hair loss will tend to respond better. Now, if you're interested in trying this treatment, you will require a doctor's prescription. A spironolactone is prescription only. And you're also going to need to recruit the services of a compounding pharmacy that will actually prepare the formula for you. The good news is, other than being readily available, this stuff is cheap, and I mean really, really cheap. Just to give you an idea, to make a 1% strength for a standard 60 ml minoxidil bottle, you would need 0.6 grams of spironolactone. That's 600 milligrams. And you can get 30 generic tablets with a 100 milligram potency for less than $20, meaning you would need six of these tablets for one bottle, making one tablet pack last for five bottles. So let us know your thoughts in the comments and we would especially like to hear from you if you've tried out topical spinal lactone for your own hair loss. Till next time, this was Tony from HairGuard. Take care.